So my primary focus in studying the Apollo samples in the past has been to understand how the lunar crust was built uh, very soon after the moon differentiated into a core mantle and crust. But we can use the chemistry and the mineralogy of, the, of those samples to sort of understand what were the magmatic processes, what was going on in, inside the moon that generated these crust-building magmas very early on in the moon's history. So here uh, I have a couple of uh, lunar samples. Uh, now these are lunar meteorites that were collected in uh, the deserts of Northwest Africa, um, which is a great place to go looking for meteorites, uh, brought to the scientific market, um, or brought to the scientific community by meteorite dealers who identified them as, as lunar meteorites, meteorites that came were blasted off of the lunar surface, which we know primarily based on our analyses of the Apollo samples, we sort of have an idea for what, what we're looking for in terms of a lunar rock, so when we identify a meteorite, we don't know where it came from, but we can say, based on Apollo, that came from the moon. You know, Apollo was fi basically 50 years ago right now. Um, you know, exactly 50 years ago, this second, the astronauts were on their way, way to the moon for the first time. And we've been studying those rocks, obviously, for 50 years. But I'd, I think I'd, I'd really like to emphasize we're not at the end yet. Um, there's still a lot to learn about not only the moon, but about uh, the moon's relationship with the Earth, about the origins of the solar system, what was going on early in, in uh, the history of our planets. And so even with all of the samples that we have, 800 plus pounds from the moon, it still pales in comparison to what we have from Earth.